Okay, welcome back. Uh, I took a break since yesterday when I did question 16 from this um, October 2024 Unit 1 Physics exam from Edexcel International A Level. And um, I said I would have to stop because uh, I ran out of time yesterday. I think the exam is on Wednesday. Today's Monday. So here is what I'm calling part six. So part five, we went through question 16. Here's question 17. Okay, so let's get into it. The student is about to do a bungee jump, it says, from a high bridge. The student is attached to the bridge by an elastic rope. The student jumps from the bridge and initially accelerates, okay? So obviously that would be just like free fall to start with. The diagram shows the student at three different positions during the bung bungee jump. At position A, the distance fallen by the student is equal to the original length of the rope, so no extension in the starting point. So in diagram A, they've just reached the original length of the rope, so there'll be no extension in position A. Okay. Then at position B, which is the middle diagram, the student is in equilibrium. That means the rope has extended to the point where the force due to extension is equaling the weight. Yeah, so that's why there is equilibrium, balance forces. And then uh, in position C, the third diagram, there, uh, the rope is at its maximum extension in terms of it's not going to extend any uh, further. So basically, whatever caused it to extend, which was the person bungee jumping, their potential energy would have gone into getting the, the rope to the maximum extension that it's going to reach. Therefore, it's going to be at its maximum length. Yeah, and that is the maximum extension. So those are the three positions. So basically, the, the person jumping has, elastic, has gravitational potential energy, and then um, it converts into the elastic potential energy of the rope. Okay, and that's how you've got to think about it. So the first question says, explain, there's a six mark question, so whenever you see an asterisk, it's the quality of your written communication that's going to get you the marks and they want you to make um, good uh, explanations. They want to give detail and depth and clarity and how your sequencing of your thoughts is arranged in a logical manner. Okay, it says explain how the acceleration of the student changes as she moves from position A in the diagrams we just ex explained to position C, the maximum extension of the um, bungee rope. Okay, and then it says assume that air resistance is negligible so we can ignore energy losses to the surroundings. Okay, so up, this is how I've done it, and I think it's very similar to uh, the mark scheme. So Assume, up to position A, um, the weight is initially the only force, so acceleration will be its maximum, and it should be approximately equal to uh, acceleration due to gravity, and it's downwards. So you should even say it's downwards. Remember, what gets the marks? Um, depth, detail, clarity. And um, because there is negligible air resistance that's not going to slow it down so basically what's going to slow it down is any tension in the bungee uh, rope okay and then as weight is greater than tension there is a resultant force downwards okay so uh, the acceleration downwards will continue um, until the rope is stretched. But when the rope is stretched beyond its original length, that's um, A, original length is up to diagram A, so that the rope is still um, falling with the bungee jumper up to position A and kind of loose. It's not tense, okay? 
then after position A, the tension increases from zero, okay? And then between A and B, so we're now halfway between A and C, the resultant force downwards, obviously, gradually decreases. Why? Because the rope is acting against the weight uh, that as the tension builds up in it. Yeah? So the acceleration decreases. Yeah? So these two points, the last two points, are linked. And then at B, equilibrium is reached. What does that mean? It means the forces are balanced. That means tension is equal to weight. So the acceleration will become zero. And it's still moving down. Yeah? It's, uh, the acceleration becomes zero doesn't mean it stops. It means it's no longer going to get faster. Okay? But it's still continuing to move downwards. The forces are balanced. Yeah? You need to say this. So I'm kind of writing it in shorthand for this video. And you need to explain it very clearly when you're under exam conditions. Okay? And finally, um, between B and C, the resultant force is actually upwards as then, uh, because at B it becomes uh, tension equals weight, and after B, the tension will be greater than weight, yeah? So the student decelerates, yeah? And at C, the deceleration is such that the velocity becomes zero before it pulls the person back up towards her starting point, okay? Now, obviously, the more gravitational potential energy the person has, the more they'll extend the rope. Make sense? Okay, so that's the six marks, and I don't know how many. Each of these arrows over here is one marking point, the way I've written it, yeah? Um, and obviously, the, it's up to the examiner. What they're looking for, is any of these marking points that or points of irrelevant physics content points, if you like, gets you up to the four marks. And the other two marks that they give you to get you up to six comes from how clearly you've made the links and how the quality of your written communication. So um, there's two components to the examiner marking these. Okay, so that's part A. Part B is then more mathematical. And there's two ways of doing this. And the mark scheme's done it in this first method I'm going to go through. And then I'll show you there might be an easier way for you to understand it. Okay? Remember I said that the gravitational potential energy is basically eventually becomes the elastic potential energy of the rope. Okay? All right. So it says the bridge is over above a river. The student will reach the river if the rope stretches to a total length of 35 meters. Total length of 35 meters. Okay? Now they're telling you here the original length of the rope is 17 meters. So I've called that L0. Yeah? Um, don't like the way that's done that. Let me do that again. That's better. So the original length, so in other words, um, if the rope extends by 18 meters, it will have reached the river, okay? So the student mass is obviously relevant because that will decide on how much gravitational potential energy uh, the person has. And it says the rope behaves like a spring with a stiffness constant. Rope behaves like a spring with a stiffness constant of 250 newtons per meter, okay? So we know the stiffness of the rope, and you got to deduce, this is your job now, is to deduce whether the student will reach the river uh, during the bungee jump. So at the start, gravitational potential energy is mg delta h, and basically we got 22,300 joules it up to th in three significant up to three significant figures accuracy so if she reaches the river the increase in length of the extension must be 18 meters yeah so we want to know um, will the rope extend by 18 meters well uh, so there is a way of doing it 
which I think is uh, another way that I will look at it with you after I've shown you how the Mark scheme is doing it. So they're saying that f equals kx, where I've put delta l as delta x, change in length. At 18 meters, yeah, this would mean a force of 4,500 newtons. Now, as you know, elastic potential energy, if you put force against force on the y-axis, extension on the uh, x-axis, then the the work the energy stored will be the area under the force extension graph yeah so once we know the force involved at 18 meters yeah then you know the, the the triangle that you're trying to work out the energy in so then 18 meters of stretched ropes how much would it be so at the, the end of this uh, graph that i've sketched here will be 18 meters on the x-axis yeah so 18 meters will be the end point of that graph, okay? So at that point, 18 meters stretched, elastic potential energy is stored in the rope, and elastic potential energy is the area under the graph, which is half Fx, or in this case, half F change in length, as I've called it, okay? It's the same. You put the numbers in, we just worked out that 4,500 is the force, yeah, and we know that it to reach the river, it needs to extend by 18 meters from its original length of 17 meters up to 35. Well, to do that, the energy required will be 40,500 joules. That will be the energy required, okay? Well, it doesn't get, how can it get 40,000 uh, joules of energy? The only source of energy is whatever the gravitational potential energy was at the start. Yeah, and the gravitational potential energy at the start was 22,500. So the gravitational potential energy at the start was 22,500. So to create this elastic strain energy needed to stretch the rope by 18 meters is insufficient. There is not enough, okay? Not enough gravitational potential energy to do it. So because 22,300 is uh, just over half, of the required energies to stretch it by 80 meters so she will not reach the river okay so that's the way the mark scheme has done it and uh, i haven't uh, analyzed where you're getting the marks from i'm sure you'll be able to work it out okay i haven't uh, included the mark scheme in my uh, walkthrough only because i didn't have a pdf copy that I had attached to this uh, exam paper, partly because I was at home when I was doing it. So here's another method of doing it. So how much energy, so you, you know what I've basically been explained to you. The gravitational potential energy, GPE, to stretch the rope by 13 point, yeah, that's the only energy we got is we have enough energy gravitationally, 22,000 whatever joules it was. It, if, I'll show you that you can only stretch the rope by 13.4 meters. So this is an alternative way that you can do it. Now, so if that's true, what I told you, then the rope will reach 30.4 meters. And it needs to reach 35 meters in total to reach um, the river. So that's less than 35 meters. So this is an alternative way of you being able to uh, prove to the examiner that you know what you're doing. Because the gravitational potential energy at start, MGH, will basically become half kx squared. Half kx squared is also the area under the elastic strain energy because F equals kx, and you can rep replace F with um, F equals kx. You can replace um, f in the equation above with kx so you end up with kx squared so you can just say mgh equals half kx squared yeah so you don't even need to work out f in this method and then you'll find that the extension squared if you make extension squared the subject of the equation yeah you basically we know this is 22,300 so that's there you double it because of the two and you divide it by the stiffness constant, which is 250, and you'll show that the extension that you'll get from
from this much gravitational potential energy, the rope will only extend by 13.4 meters. Now, I actually think this is a neater method than the method above. And I think if you do this, you'll also get full marks, but you just need to perhaps explain what you're doing in a little bit more detail. For example, you need to say that it's not going to reach the river because it needs to extend by 18 meters, because the river is 35 meters from the starting point. So I hope you found this useful looking at two methods to solve this problem. And that's question 17 done. So this is part six of the video run through on this paper um, from October 2024, unit one. So if you're waiting for the next video, I'll try and do it uh, this evening. Uh, there's two questions left, question 18 and 19. Just remember, if you can help the channel by liking it, sharing it with your friends, they've got their exam in two days time, and subscribe so you know when the next video is going to be uploaded. So I noticed I've got a few new subscribers for students taking unit one, and um, a lot of positive feedback coming through if you read the comments underneath the videos. Um, and really the only way the channel will grow is with your help to allow more students to get uh, access to my explanations. So it's the board's in your court. I've done uh, my work and uh, I started the channel for my own students who use it to improve their own uh, communication skills before they go into their final exam. Okay, one of my students today who's actually in year 13 said he's done all the past papers that he uh, for this international A-level at least three times. So he thinks he's now moving into the A-zone. So let's hope he's got there. So hard work is the key. And if you haven't done all the exam papers, you can still have a good chance of getting high grades. But really the, the only um, certain method of getting the highest grades is doing as many past papers as you can and as often as you can, so you kind of get so familiar with the language and the terminology and how you speed up your problem solving skills that will get the, you the highest marks. Okay, well thanks for watching, hopefully see you in the next video, bye for now.